Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield LEGO video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the differential gear, and its many uses in our vehicular creations. So, let's get started, shall we? But before we get any further, I would like you to stand up, step away from your mobile device or your computer, run to the nearest co LEGO collection, and grab these ten pieces. You'll need one differential gear frame, three 12 tooth half bevel gears, two bushings, two axles of any length, and two tires and wheels. The only thing that these will need is you'll need to have a cross hole or an axle hole on each of them. With these in pieces in hand, let's get on to the video. Now, I am sure that at one time or another, you built a little car like this. Don't deny it, we were all at this stage once. When playing with this car, you probably noticed that it was great at driving forwards and backwards. However, if you wanted to steer, the tires would bind quite a lot against the ground. It'd be kind of hard to turn it. When you graduated to bigger cars with bigger tires and bigger surface area, you might have found this problem was increased. Now the cars would drive backwards and forwards very smoothly and easily, but trying to turn them? It's absolutely impossible. Thinking that adding some sort of working steering to the front tires would solve this problem, you might have added rack and pinion steering, like we looked at in our previous episode. But when you tested out this design, the back wheels, though much more subtly, still did bind a bit. If you don't believe me, Test it out for yourself. Go grab some tires, build a simple car frame, and try to turn it. Once you're sure you believe me about this binding, let me prove it to you. And let me show you how to fix it. When a set of attached wheels turn, as you can see by my little diagram here, one wheel has to turn a much greater space than the other the outside wheel must rotate a considerable distance more, almost entire rotation of these wheels, more than the inside wheel. Since the two wheels are attached, and the axle can't rotate at two different speeds at once, one wheel must slip across the ground while the other one turns. What's the solution? Well, it's pretty simple. Think about the first little car that we looked at. It wasn't able to steer perfectly, but that was because of the front steering. The back wheels, since each wheel could rotate at its own rate, was able to steer a lot more easily than our other design. So what's our solution with a larger model? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is attach two free-floating connectors to the wheels. Then each wheel can spin at its own rate, and thus it can make the turn very quickly and smoothly. So, if you want to make steering much cleaner, just make sure each of the back two tires can spin individually and you'll be fine. But what if you want to motorize a chassis like this with the differential gear design? Well, there are two ways, and the first revolves around this, the differential gear frame we picked up earlier. On its own, the differential frame is pretty useless, just an elegant spacer. But, with a couple bevel gears and a couple axles, this thing can be very useful. What you do is place one half bevel on the little nub inside the gear. You'll then place another to the right side and stick an axle through the hole into it like this, and do the same on the other side. As you can see here, now you have the differential gear with three gears that can rotate within it. On the frame of the differential gear, you can see this gear here, which looks like a 24 tooth gear, and this gear here, which looks like a 16 tooth gear. They are. This means that you can rotate the differential frame using a train of gears. But what does this frame really do for us? Well, as you can see, 
when this drives forwards, when the wheels rotate, or when you drive the differential gear, and you're moving straight, the differential will spin and rotate each of the wheels at an equal pace. However, because of the little gear train within, if one wheel is stationary and the differential is still spinning, the other wheel can spin freely. As you can see here, it's now very easy to turn the assembly. Since this differential frame has teeth, it's also very easy to motorize, and thus can be very useful if you're designing a RC car, for example. You can figure out what kind of gearing works best for your model. But what if you don't have one of these differentials? What will you do if you want to make a large motorized vehicle using one? All you need are two pulleys of any kind, two bands or belts, and the axles and frame and tires that you'll need for your vehicle anyways. You'll build the same two-sided frame that we did before using bushings and wheels like this. You'll then attach another pulley and loop a band around it like this. You'll be then build exactly the same thing on the other side only making sure that the top pulleys are attached to the same axle while the bottom axles and pulleys, the ones that the wheels will be on, are still separate. But how does this work as a power differential? Well, think about how pulleys work. Pulleys are designed to impart motion across a gap, similar to a chain or to a gear. However, pulleys can slip. Thus, if something is rotating too fast or too slow, the pulley will continue to rotate, but the band itself will slip on the other pulley. So thus, if you have one wheel fixed or solid, the other wheel can still turn by means of the pulley. This allows both wheels to be powered, but to rotate at their own rates when steering. One could also attempt a similar design with any other device that slips, like one of those Lego white clutch gears. But even as that slip in pulleys and clutch gears is what makes this design possible, it also creates a limit. For, as you know, with pulleys and clutches, they don't, they can only rotate to a certain speed, after which the other pulley will simply slip away and the tires won't rotate that fast. Thus, if you want more speed or torque, it would probably be best to use the LEGO designed differential. For today, we talked about the LEGO differential drive. We talked about how a differential works in the first place. We explained uses for the LEGO differential frame, and also came up with a few alternate ways to design a differential in your models. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this video. I hope that it was interesting or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a little while. If you did in fact like this video, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you didn't like this video, still, please comment and rate. And if you really want, still, please subscribe too. The point is, I want to hear what you have to say, what you think would make this channel different and better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.